G'day guys, I'm Miracle Max, and today I'm being helped by my assistant, SJ. We're looking at a Jeep Grand Cherokee 2007 model with the airbag light on. What's wrong with it? I don't know. Should we have a look? Yep. Yes. Okay, so you may or may not see SJ in this video. She's got the attention of a two-year-old. Hang on a sec. She is two. Oh, maybe that's why. Anyway, let's hook into it and have a look. So yeah, I know I haven't got my seatbelt on, so that's not really an issue, but you can see the other light that's on the dash there, the airbag light. What's the first test we should do? Okay, let's grab the scan tool and check it out. I've already done a full system search as you can see, but you can see on our occupant restraint control we have one fault code. Let's go down to that and see what that fella has to say. And of course for safety issues we've got to do our one, two, three, four. And okay that. Fat finger syndrome. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. I haven't even connected the thing. What a putz. Well there's your problem lady. What an idiot. I forgot to reconnect it after I turned it off before. Take two. Hmm. Connecting. That looks better. Alright, diagnostic fault codes. Okie dokie. Worldwide blah blah blah. It says there that we have a B1B2A which is a first row driver's seat belt pretensioner circuit open. So we have an open circuit do we? Well, let's just escape out of that and have a look at some data. That's always important to look at, isn't it? Now this is the fella here that we're looking at, the first row driver's pretensioner. And it's got, it's got ohmage, folks. It's got ohmage. Let's just have a look at that information a little bit closer. This is the fella here that we're looking at, that bloke there, um, our first row driver's pretensioner. Now, as you can see, it's got some ohmage attached to it there. You can say, well, hey, it's not an open circuit. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But let's just have a look at that in detail. Let's just do some selection of some items and compare data. So let's have a look at our driver's side pretensioner, passenger's side pretensioner. Let's just have a look at those two for starters. As I said, they both have continuity. They both have uh, resistance there. But have a look at how high this one is in comparison to the others. Most of them are between like two, well, zero through to about three ohm. This bloke here is out of his mind. He's at 6.7. Now the ECU now says, hey, that resistance is out of parameters. I'm now going to classify you as an open circuit. So what's causing this high resistance? Those yellow connectors are our airbag or our SRS system. Um, this is one of our main harnesses, of course. But you can see it's just flopping around in the breeze there. Should be connected up here, I believe. And this fella over here, see him way down there? That's our pretensioner one. Now, it may be doing something else because it's got four wires, not just two. But um, there's a couple of earths attached, I'd imagine. But you can see that there's a connector or a plug that should fit into a hole up here underneath the seat. As the driver moves backwards and forwards, they're going to create all sorts of problems. Um, have a look at this wiring here sitting on the metal. Not good. And have a look at the wiring, which is pushed quite tight actually, in actual fact, against the seat over here. Also not so good. But notice what happens to the ohmage when I give this bloke over here a bit of a poke and a bit of a wiggle like this. So let's have a look at the scan tool while I'm doing this sort of action. All right, wigglage time. All right, 7.9, 6.2. All I'm doing is wiggling it, guys. Um, I haven't changed anything. I haven't done anything different. There's no black magic involved here. You can see by the shadows, all I'm doing is giving it a bit of a wiggle. So, what's the issue there? Well, who knows? It could be just a bad connection. You can see it says our minimum is 4.1 ohms. Our maximum is 7.9. What a huge range difference. The other one, the passenger one, is uh, 2.5 minimum, 2.7 maximum. Let's pull that connector apart and have a look at it. Of course, one of the super important things that you must do when working on a safety restraint system is to make sure that it's powered down and the capacitors are discharged. 
You can do that by removing the battery negative or positive, whatever you like, and leaving it for a certain amount of time. Or you can pull the fuses or fusible links associated with the airbag system and once again let it power down. Give it some, some suggest a few minutes, some suggest 20 minutes, some suggest half an hour, whatever it takes to make it safe. Hey, that's the important thing. So that's what I've got back here. I'm having a look at where the fuses are located so that I can pull them, give it some time before I start pulling that connector apart. This one's a bit of a tricksy one, guys. On our auto data wiring diagram for fuses, you can see that F29 is one of our SRS components that needs to be pulled. Now, if you go to the engine bay where it's located, I'll show you what it looks like. This is the cover of the fuse box I need to look at. And what they're telling us is um, number 29 is down here somewhere. But if you have a close look, what's it say? Well, it says spare fuse, load of rubbish. The giveaway was this fella over here. Have a look at that serious big yellow sucker there. Now that has the fuses um, in there and all you've got to do is lift them up. They stay in place, but you just lift them up and allow time for the capacitors to drain. I've had some other service items to carry on with while I've been waiting. So about, oh, I suppose a couple of hours have passed by now. I've gone and had my lunch, chill, chillaxed a little bit, and I'm back into it again. So I can be confident that the capacitors have drained from the SRS ECU, and I can safely work on the system. Let's head back under the seat. The more I look at this, the more convinced I am that someone's been here before me. I mean, this connector here, you can see, oh, you probably can't because I'm in the road, Max, seriously. See this little thing here, this little slot? That goes uh, into here, this fella over here. You see that? And of course, this one here, this connector here, has a little, uh, where is it? This fella back here. Ah, uh, I'm in the road, Max, seriously. That fella there should clip into, there's a hole just here in a bracket. That should be into that. Why are these things flopping all over the place? It's not conducive to good connections. And of course, that's a bit of a worry, isn't it? So has someone been in here to have a play with the, um, perhaps the seat motor or whatever it is? This is typically what can be damaged, particularly shorted out wires. And this has been dragged over the top, this particular one. And I believe that it should go underneath, not over the top. But hey, I might be wrong. This is the one that I need to disconnect. We pull back that red. So that's been pulled back already. I didn't do that. Oh man, looks like someone's been in before me. So we just disconnect that fella. Okay. Now, don't know if you guys can see that. I might zoom in for you. Zoom edge. All right. Can you see up the top there? I might just grab a spudger. Wherefore art thou, Spudger? Hello. Don't leave me, Spudger. Don't leave me. <laughs> there you are. See up the top here, not the pins themselves. Gold-plated pins, of course. Um, but these fellas up the top, here, 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 and here, they are called shorting bars. And they're designed to short out these terminals to one another so that the airbag can't be activated. It's basically a backup system. Of course, it's no use trying to check continuity between these wires with the shorting bars across. It'll just give us zero. So we need to push those shorting bars up. And one way you can do it is with cable ties. So you can see I've got the cable ties pushed in, holding those shorting bars back. I should be able to check the resistance on these terminals now um, and get an accurate reading. I've got my cable ties pushed into place so that I've got those shorting bars pushed away. I've just put a couple of extension wires onto my pretensioner um, going back to the actual squib or the firing unit at the seat belt. Now, remember we had resistance of up to, oh, what was it, six point something ohms? That was ridiculous. What have we got now? We've got 2.3. So to me, that shows that the um, pretensioner is okay. There shouldn't really be an issue with that. So possibly it's just a fault between the connections here and here. I'll check them, clean them, put some electrical spray in there, clean them up a little bit. I've had this once before with a Mitsubishi, so hopefully we can sort that out. Then after we've uh, put all the connections back together and of course put all these connectors back where they belong, you know, positioned correctly instead of just dumped on the ground, uh, we can have a look at our scan tool and see if our connections are within specs. That hopefully should put our light out.
I've just been doing a terminal retention check and that's to see um, how tight the connector here the male one goes into the female here. So what I've used is uh, something similar to the terminal that I have over here. I don't have the exact one, but this is pretty close. Um, and you just insert it into the female side of things. If it goes in tight into each one equally, then that should be fine for terminal retention. And they appear all correct, so I'm happy with that. I'll just put some contact cleaner on there and make sure we've got good continuity, then check it with the scan tool and see if it solved the issue. Just before I put back everything together, I have cable tied these connectors out of the road. The reason you need to do that is because when the customer gets in their car and they go backwards and forwards with their seat, um, if you know someone else hops into the vehicle, the only bit that should be moving is this fella here. And maybe that's what's happened. Perhaps someone else has hopped in there and um, stretched it back all the way and it's popped off its mounting. That's all the way back, but it's still hasn't popped off its mounting and it's held in quite tight. So like I said, I'm wondering if someone else has been in there. Now I'll put all my fuses back in, power up the system and have a look at the resistance on that front tensioner. So scan tool's hooked up again, and as you can see, same code, but this fella over here has changed from an active to a stored, which is great. Let's have a look at the live data now and see what that tells us. Um, enter, enter, selected. And what do we have now? Well, lo and behold, we have a 2.5 compared to about a 2.5, something along those lines. They're consistent. I'll give that connector a wiggle again and just see what it does. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Well, I've given it some major wiggleage, and the worst that I can get out of it is, what's that? The highest point was uh, 2.5. So that's pretty good, hey? Alrighty, so it looks like we've sorted the issue. What do I need to do to complete the job? Well, I need to clear those fault codes. So I'll just clear that fella out, make sure that uh, it is gone all history, or oh, she's no longer with us. Successful, we'll give it another fault code check. Now we'll just escape out of that, escape out of that, and uh, just give it another scan on that system and make sure that it's still clear. Okay, that one, and it should say, no fault codes. Yay, good job. Okay, so yeah, purely because of a bad connection, someone's had a play with it before, possibly doing some work under the seat. I don't know, maybe even attempting to put on seat covers. Some people do that, and in actual fact, they can pull off the connectors and create poor connections. That's most likely what happened in this case. I'll take it for a road test. The airbag light is no longer on the dash, uh, but I'll take it for a road test anyway as part of the other section of the service that I did and make sure that it stays out. But yeah, good news. Back from a road test and SJ has decided to join me once again. Typical two-year-old, as soon as the work's finished, they turn up for all the glory. Never mind. So in this particular case, it was a bad connection underneath the seat for Sorry. the seat belt tensioner. And we've been able to repair that. Airbag light is still out. Hopefully the customer will appreciate that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Can you, can you say subscribe to the channel? Go subscribe. I can't. You can't. Oh, that'd be right. Give it a like. Feel free to comment down below. So until next time, guys, this is Miracle Max and SJ. We will catch you later. Catch you later. Here we go. Come on. Go. Catch you later. Catch you later. Catch you later. And again. Here we go. Ready? Catch you later. Ready? Set. Go. Catch you later. Catch you later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll put you down there, Missy. Bye. 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 Bye.